Fright Night is a talk show with published authors, writers, and content creators discussing both the creative and technical sides of writing, as well as the industry surrounding it, from novels to screenplays to comics and more. And now, here's your host, author Travis I. Sivart. Welcome to Right Night. Thank you for joining us. Appreciate that. Um, tonight's topic is going to be book signings. And I also want to let everybody know in chat that we are recording a podcast right now. So we may not get to all the comments or we might hold off before responding to them to fit them in, in the right place. And everybody listening to the podcast, we do have a live chat audience interacting with us. And you might hear this noise when I want to interrupt somebody to read a comment. Or we might just read them off down the road. Um, so, I am Travis Sivart. I am your host and creator of the show, Right Night. Well, I should say uh, we're all kind of creators of it, but I was the one that pulled their chains and went, hey, want to do a thing? Um, that's not a bell. And uh, <laughs> the book that I'm working on right now, I actually have a big issue with the title, and I, and I may speak about that at some point. But... Silver and Smith Chronicles is a series of two people, Silver, kind of a middle-aged bounty hunter who's filthy rich and he's trying to do good in the world, and he meets Hank, which is Henrietta Smith, um, who's a young idealistic archaeologist, and it's set 20, 30 years in the future, so it's borderline cyberpunk and dystopia, and in the first book, at the very end, Something happened that totally changed the world and brought back ancient things. So I'm exploring that in book two right now, and I have a working title that I'm not pleased with. So let's pass the intro back over to Michael. Who are you? Why are you in their living room? Hello. My name is Michael Thompson, independent author and illustrator. Uh, I write all sorts of sci-fi, fantasy, adventure books. Uh, one of my series for younger readers is the Chicken Boy series. This was the first series Yay. that I ever wrote, and this is the latest book, actually, that I have out right now, book four of the Chicken Boy series, Chicken Boy and the Might of the Monkey Man. And the whole series is about a chicken who eats radioactive bird seed, becomes a superhero, and he and his pals save the world from monsters and mad scientists in a town where nothing's ever quite normal. You can pick one up today, michaelthompsonbooks.com, M-I-C-H-A-E-L-T-H-O-M-P-S-O-N, books.com, along with all my other uh, stuff that I'm working on. Now, I'm curious, is his pals also animals, or are they people? He has, uh, he's got some some friends of his are people. We got Matt and John are sort of the main characters uh, from the first book. We also have Sarah, and Professor Big Nose is the one who gave him his uh, powers in the first place, which is one of my, one of my oldest and uh, I guess definitely my longest running character because he existed in little short stories I wrote before uh, I even wrote Chicken Boy. Uh, and then we have Impy, Barnacle, or some of the non-human little sidekicks here. Gotcha. Uh, and then Puffin, the Bird Wonder, is the latest addition to the ensemble. <laughs> nice. Aaron? Uh, hi, I'm Aaron Kennedy. Uh, I'm currently working on the Icarus Black series set in the uh, Ships of Valor universe. Uh, that's the same universe as the Persona Non Grata uh, book, um, uh, which stars Eri. And Heart, the sh uh, sentient AI ship. Uh, I've been a technical writer for 25 years. Uh, I've been published in the Army Times and the uh, Army uh, University Press uh, for my works on uh, fitness and leadership. Very good. And for our audience out there, whether you're via podcast or the live stream, let us know what you're reading, writing, working on, what kind of project you're creatively engaged in. Now, I also want to let everybody know that this is a adult show. Sometimes we have some adult language and humor and whatnot. And I covered all the rest of that. Okay. Other than that, don't forget there is merch that you can get. And we just put out our Christmas merchandise where you can get a Travis Tavern Talk hoodie and coffee mug with a matching holiday design. And I, I chose the design I feel best fits. It's, a, it's adorable. Just go check that merch out. And you can uh, find that. Mug. Huh? It just sounds so cozy. It does, doesn't it? It, it definitely yeah, like a mystery. 
and it's got a, a snowflake of different geeky icons on it. Um, oh, magnificent. So, and you guys can find that at uh, bit.ly slash tavern merch. That's B I T L Y slash tavern merch. And don't forget, you can find Aaron's books on Amazon by searching for Aaron Kennedy. That's A A R O N Kennedy, like the president, or at bit.ly slash Aaron Kennedy. That's B-I-T dot L-Y slash Aaron Kennedy. And my books are available at bit.ly slash Travis Books. That's B-I-T dot L-Y slash Travis Books. Other than that, don't forget to check out our other podcast, Stealing for Survival, the fantasy world where we play in a world uh, that I write in, in Portals and uh, the Downfall series. And talk to the tavern. Okay, on to the topic. Tonight we're going to talk about book signings. So this is a wide and varied thing. And not something I know a lot about a large part of it. I know a small segment of it. And I'm curious how we set these things up and who you originally reach out to to make these things happen. What kind of places do you look for and how COVID has changed that whole situation. Because I know they're still happening. Um, So I tell you what, I think if nobody objects, we're going to start with Aaron, you think I should start with you? Yeah, okay. absolutely. Let's start with because I know Michael's going to have a lot to say about this, so because he's going to be our font of knowledge in this one. Aaron, let's start with you. Okay. Well, book signing is amazingly easy. Okay, all it takes is a magic marker. I like to use one of those big, fat, friggin' sharpies, black. Okay, and the, there's a trick to this. Never start on the opening pages. There's normally a couple uh, in a book. There's normally three or four blank pages right at the beginning. Don't use that. That's for amateurs, okay? You want to go deep in there, all right? I like to go... Chapter one. (laughs) No, no, no. No, you want to go like a good third, all right? Oh, my. (laughs) Yeah, like 130 pages in if it's a 300 book. Like surprise signing when they're reading. You say here, finally. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And another thing, not one of your books, somebody else's. Okay. Mm-hmm. I personally like to sign Alan Dean Foster's books. Okay. Smack dab in the middle. I go over to friggin' Barnes and Noble, sign his books, and I make it a sport. <laughs> I'm sure there's Sign a as many as I can at the end of the signing where you're running from the store. That's correct. <laughs> now, the real trick is to sign as many as you can before mall security can find you. Especially if you're not right. in the mall. <laughs> that is correct. And you just say, it's okay, I'm an author. <laughs> That's right. You may not be the author of the book. I'm right. a professional. It's okay. It gives you authority. Right. Well, that's what that's why the guys used to have the little press pass thing. Yeah, yeah. I still have. We mine. need an author pass. Author pass. Right. Yeah. Have you ever heard of freedom of the press? Books are printed on a press, therefore, you have freedom of the press. Ipso facto. Ipso facto. Yeah. Well, I mean, you've heard of ipsum lorem, right? No. It's some lore. Right. That's what. Well, whenever you see friggin' books that are printed off of friggin' uh, just random stuff, Mm -hmm. uh, the random lettering, that's some lore. Oh, cool. Yeah. Joe says, don't sign a book on chapter 11. You'll go bankrupt instantly. (laughs) Chapter 7, (laughs) or chapter 7, or chapter 13 as well. Mm, That's some good humor. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Well, it might take 10 or 7 years, depending. That's right. So what other further wisdom do you have for book signings? Well, doing it in person is risky now, okay? Especially in 2020, okay? Um, You can always set up a web page and say, hey, I'll sign your book. Just send your book to me, and it's a great way to get a collection of books. I mean, in case you want to read them more than once. Then you can send them an Alan Dean Foster book back. (laughs) Right, so, okay, let's, let's. I don't have anything to add to that. Let's just move over to Michael real quick. Okay. Oh, that that was that was awesome. <laughs> um, yeah. So, uh, book signing. When you when you were saying that there there are ways to uh, 
to do it uh, uh virtually there there, there are I've, I've seen um you can you can sign book plates and you can send book plates to people oh. um yeah yeah so <laughs> it's like a sticker and you can put it in the book whether it's on page one or or, ch or chapter 11 or whatever whatever you want that's a good um, point yeah so, so to put michael back on track here yes yes <laughs> I, i've done signings at conventions and i'll speak about that later and i'll speak about my opinions and thoughts and knowledge but mm -hmm. you have signed done dozens of book signings from what i seem to have in my head how do you go about choosing a place and once you do who do you contact to set it up or is it not done in that order right um so i've been doing book signing since i was 13 show off um i think the first i think the first <laughs> first one that I ever did um, was at a little gift shop and uh, it was called the whimsical gallery and it was in uh, in an old town near where I live and I the way I basically went about doing it is um, in principle it's the same it's the same thing I still do which is I I just walked around and I was I was a little kid and and I was uh, and I said hey I, I'm an author uh, I'd like to sign at your shop, and so I I would just go door to door. <laughs> I would just I would, I would I would go around and uh, and go to if I could find the owner or or someone who worked there and, and ask, hey, can you would you be willing to uh, have my book in your shop? Uh, that was kind of how it started. I was trying to see if I could get people to carry uh, Chicken Boy, the first one. No, did they carry it after you did a signing there? Yeah, they, yeah, they carried it. Oh, okay. uh, so this was an independent store mm -hmm. and. Um, she could control her own inventory and uh yeah she carried it so that was where uh a lot of my book signings were for uh the first two years um at least like uh because i had chicken boy 2 as well at um during some festivals and then where i did a lot of my book signings was borders so uh before before borders closed down if Me i could interrupt real quick with joe <laughs> joe is on a roll <laughs> Joe says, I just imagine Michael opening a copy of Chicken Boy during a book signing, putting an egg in it, slamming the book shut. <laughs> <laughs> it's a power <laughs> <move>. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a, like a how-to basic video. <laughs> you want to refrigerate Process. that. You should do a video like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then I just pull up the ripping book and say, <laughs> MichaelThompsonBooks.com. Um, yeah, so essentially it, it's uh, – and, and, and a lot of people ask, it's like, oh, how do you set up a, how do you set up a signing here? How do you set up a signing there? Just go straight to the place wherever you want to be. Uh, go there uh, or call them up or uh, I, I like to, I like to at least call them up or, or I, I like to go there in person if I can, because mm -hmm. you can establish, establish a connection. Um, but phone calls are good too. And ask what the process would be. And that's the first step. So you don't just walk in and go like, hey, April 7th, I'll be here. What space do you want me in? It's a power move. And then I slam a, slam an egg on the counter. <laughs> <laughs> Yell chicken boy right out. My house now. <laughs> Causing a distraction for Aaron, who's on aisle six, yeah. signing Alan Dean Foster books. <laughs> in chapter 11. Yeah, chapter 11. Um, yeah, so, so, uh, so and. What about larger <laughs> chains? What about like Books a Million right. or Barnes and Noble? What's. Is it general manager right. or is there another way? Yeah. So uh, initially, I when I when I was first starting out, it was uh, independent stores that were more likely um, to more likely to take you because self publishing was was very new, and um, like the big the big places, they they ordered through certain distributors, which uh, I wasn't in because I was doing it myself. Mm -hmm. um, but later on. When I was still doing it myself, uh, there there was a time when I and I and I hadn't done a Barnes and Noble. I'd done one Barnes and Noble signing because they decided to try doing a local author festival, mm -hmm. uh, but it didn't really go well, um, and and that was uh, because of a few things. And, and there were there were a lot of authors there, um, so it wasn't something that they typically did. But I was... apologize for that. That was my fault. <laughs> that was that was you signing in aisle you know thirteen. <laughs> <laughs> um and and the eggs that joe brought but <laughs> there was there was a time when uh i had so world of the orb came out 
and I was I was on the lookout for places to 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 sign to sign the book, and all of my normal spots uh, were totally booked at the time because we were getting close to the holidays, and um, and so all of my independent stop shops they were like, yeah, we've got no availability, and I was like, oh no, you know, because this was the this was the premiere of uh, the book that had taken me the longest to write at the time. Uh, and, and that had undergone the most rewrites. I had done it when I was in high school and then again when I was in college and then I finished it after I, after I graduated. And so I decided, you know what, if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna be turned away, I'm gonna be turned away by the, by the biggest, <laughs> by the biggest store on the block. So I, I went into Barnes and Noble and, uh, because all the, all the independent stores weren't, uh, didn't have availability. I, I said, Hey, you know, uh, I'm an author. I have this. Uh, I was wondering if, if I if I could sign here, and they're like, oh, you know, I actually heard that they were doing uh, something with local authors, and and the, and they gave me an email to contact. I contacted that email, and then they're like, uh, yeah, yeah, we'll we'll slide we'll slide you in. Can you do uh, can you do Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at these three locations? And I said, yes, huh? and then I worried about the logistics later. <laughs> So and I did my first ever, uh, um, other than that local author uh, festival years ago. My first official Barnes and Noble signing was in Baltimore. I, I went to the Baltimore Barnes and Noble, and then I did uh, another Barnes and Noble and uh, Fairfax, I think. And then I ended at my at at, um, at Manassas, and so that was it was a great premiere for World of the Orb, and and so just going to the place where you want to be and, and and talking to them, establishing a connection. How many books do you normally have to bring? Um, it, it it depends. I can I can usually if the crowds are really really good, then I can I can sus I can suspect like okay at best like ten ten an hour right. Wow. So, uh, so then I know then I calculate based on how many hours, you know, if the crowds are like constant and for the holidays, there's going to be a lot of people coming through the door. So so I aim for the best because I'd rather right. you know. But there is a, there is a, it is powerful to sell out as well. If you, if you, if it's totally gone, that the store, stores love that, you know, wherever, wherever you're at, uh, you sell out of the table. Um, but yeah, my record, uh, I think was in Fredericksburg. It was like 72. Nice. But, and it was a, but it was for a teacher. It was teacher appreciation day. So it was filled with teachers. And oh. I had Chicken Boy at that point, and it was perfect for elementary age kids. Yeah. Nice. So what about in this modern world? Because I know you've done signings since COVID has hit. Um, yeah. I've what, done a couple. What differences? What changes? I mean, obviously a mask. Yep. Um, it uh, That's something you discussed with the store uh, based on it, – it. for mine, they, they're outside. So the signings are usually outside, and, and – and, I haven't done a ton. I've only done two uh, for COVID because I've been focusing mainly on um, mainly on production. Uh, ooh, Chaotica, my first right night. Welcome. That's really cool. I like new people. Um, and so uh, I had uh, other people. <laughs> so so I have, and I showed this on on a show a while ago. But I had my little bookmark distributron which was the little clappy hands for social distancing to hand out bookmarks mm -hmm. um, but yeah a mask outside um and uh yeah that, that that was essentially it i also had uh hand sanitizer on the table uh so that i could and and wipes so i could sanitize the the stylus after they used it um because i you i my ipad is my register so right which that's something I wanted to talk about when, when I get to my turn. There it is. <laughs> there it is. That thing is great. So uh, now you're talking Round about with your ball. stylus. You're talking about what, what are you using a stylus and an iPad for? So um, when you are, in, it's different from place to place. But when you are collecting your own money, uh, you're gonna you're going to want to have something like a square reader. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, so I have an iPad that I won in a raffle at one point, uh, which is my uh, that with the square uh, 
plugged into it and then the chip reader. So you have the chip reader and they can put in their own card and then I have a little cup of styluses and then they can use the stylus to sign their name after they use their card because most of the time people use credit card, Makes uh, sense. I find. Uh, mm -hmm. Except at some conventions where people bring um, like a set amount of cash so they don't overspend. Right. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to read a quick comment here. Joe says, to abide by social distancing rules, Michael will be throwing copies of Chicken Boy to people. It's poultry <laughs> in motion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Also, <laughs> also <laughs> since he uh, mentioned... Uh, what, what word did he say that triggered 2319? Um, maybe social distancing. I think that triggered 2319 uh, on the... Yeah, 2319. So, anything else before I jump in? Um, I would say for people going into a book signing, have, have a nice clean setup and have, have your pitch down the pitch is one of the most important things to have for a book signing because that's going to be your opening your uh, after your icebreaker why don't that's you what do your pitch do. right now uh sure i have i have a pitch for each of my books you've heard a version of it for the chicken boy at the start of uh of this episode but like world of the orb so i would say uh so well, i would wait, say wait, can wait. I you... you're, yes. you're, you're missing the first part that you always do yeah, so the icebreaker is. Uh, <laughs> I love this. Would you, well, one would second, you like one second. Bookmark, and so I I hand him a bookmark, and and uh, and it draw it draws them over. Um, people love getting free stuff. You can make these. Uh, Travis and I both make make uh, these uh, cool. cut cut them ourselves to save to save some money. And uh, yeah, these are great. So these uh, it's a quick way to get uh, your name in someone else's hand. So hey, that's Aaron, the iceberg. Did you have a clever thing to say before he goes on? Mm-hmm. Well, that's the second best icebreaker I've ever heard. What's the first? How much does a polar bear weigh? <laughs> Enough to break the ice. <laughs> that's good. Okay, go on, Michael. I'm so slam an egg. <laughs> you lure him into arm's reach, and then... Yeah, so so I bring him over with the bookmark. They're, they're like, oh, what, what do you got? I, I introduce myself. I introduce some of the books I have, and, uh, and sometimes I'll just, you know, pick based on... Uh, based on a feeling or if I see like they're wearing like a Star Wars shirt, I'm like, oh, you like Star Wars, you may like, you know, World of the Orb, there's some cool creatures in it. And then I would give the pitch like for World of the Orb, it's a portal fantasy adventure about two best pals on a field trip to the Museum of Natural History. They sneak away from the group and break the one rule, which is not to go in the artifact room and definitely not to touch the orb. And at that point, I would gesture to the orb prop that I have on the table. Uh, and when they do, they're zapped and cast headlong into an alternate world of monsters, myths and magic that sets them on an a uh, harrowing treasure hunt to find earth again and so i open up the book show show the map and uh and then i would uh try and hand it off uh to them so they can take a look at it themselves and uh so they can feel the energy you know <laughs> see if they connect with it which by the way this is something i am going to go back and and do in my later books in downfall series there's a map and there's a glossary i didn't do this mm -hmm. in the portal series because i wanted them quicker and faster and that's something I will be adding into later books and may even go back and cool. put it into the previous ones. Just add that map inside because I think maps, maps are, are great. I yeah. love them as a reader and I miss them when I have an audio book. I'm like, oh, I want the map. Yeah, it's true. It's true. It, it is really fun. It's uh, So can I jump in here? You got. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. that's good. You know conventions a lot. Well, I'm going to say uh, there's. When doing a book signing, once you're in there and sitting down and you have your setup, and yes, as Michael said, he said a nice clean setup. Now, that's in COVID area a different thing than normally. Right, right. But also, you want your table, Aaron, with marketing. I don't know what kind of marketing you're studying, but they will speak about displays. And a chaotic display is a way to go. And it can feel very homey and cozy. And having extra little things on your desk or table or whatever is great, but too much, you lose the person's attention. If you have one book, it's pretty easy. As a matter of fact, it's hard to not make it look sparse. So you want to make sure you do have something else on your table so your table looks like it has something on it besides one book and a stack of other books. But um, you want to lay your table out where it's logical, where people who are standing back and don't want to be talked to, which a lot of people are that way, 
they can see what you have. They can catch it at a glance. One thing I do at my book signings is I will put <clears throat> a just a plain white bookmark in the book with the genre sticking out of the top and maybe two or three bullet points about the book, you know, whether it's nonfiction, steampunk, fantasy, epic, you know, whatever, something like that. So at a quick glance, without even doing more than look at the cover, they can see, oh, this is where that book is. That's the one I want to pick up and look at. <clears throat> when you're signing, I recommend get the Sharpie. Get something with the thicker tip. You don't necessarily want to use just a pen. Pens are fine, but that Sharpie stands out. It pops. Um, it does limit how much you can put in there, which is probably good, because if you're going to sign more than five books in a day, you want... Um, you, you don't want to write a paragraph. You want to limit yourself. Come up with a few... <laughs> oh, Joe... Come up with a few quick phrases that relate to your book but are kind of generic. Um, Journal of a Stranger, I'm always like, is something along the lines of enjoy the journey. Um, for the fantasy books, you know, discover the unknown. And these are good generic things that feel personal. Always ask the person how to spell their name. Now, you can use something like, oh, your name is Joe, common spelling. And they'll usually spell it no matter what. But ask yep. how to spell it. Make sure, even if you're like, I know how to spell Bob. Nope. This Bob spells it with two O's. You want to be careful of that. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> so ask. And also, where to sign. You might want to ask them where to sign. I suggest, again, that blank page in the front is good. But maybe they do want it on the front cover. Maybe they want it on the inside cover. Maybe they want it personalized. Maybe they don't want a name at all. They just want the signature because they're planning on putting it on eBay because you're that famous. Um, well, yes, sir. In that, uh, in that regards, like we're talking predominantly books, but friggin' Chicken Boy is more of a comic book thing. In comics, friggin' it's traditional to sign them on the front cover. Right, uh, Chicken Boy is a. I I know graphic it's graphic more graphic novel, but comic book feel yeah. And I'm just pointing this out for that's true for yeah. our writers, authors that's true. out I have there. Comic books that are signed on the front. It, and by the way, for Joe says, I want to meet Bob. I will sign anything he wants. Bob was actually an NPC in my Star Wars game that I had, and he like it's it's Bob with two O's, and everybody be like, you mean it? And he's like Bob depart sheet <laughs> he, he, he would cut him off bob <laughs> brazier anyhow um other places you might go for signings besides small bookstores a great uh -huh. place to go is curiosity shops so retro daddio in williamsburg run by jen is an awesome place and she often holds book signings there um so and also there's a oh I'm, I'm so ashamed I can't remember it. Um, my editor recently put some of my children's book that I write as Joe Wilson in a Quixotic curiosity. Arts. What's that? Quixotic Arts. Quixotic Arts. Oh, hey, real quick. Let me say hello to a Dranken official who stopped in through some bits. Good to see you. Showing his biddies. <laughs> and we will tell Bob you said hello. <laughs> Chaotica, since I'm reading comments, says one of my favorite authors is also an artist, and she does her signature and a little doodle with her signings. Absolutely love it. Yes, personalizing like that is great. Michael, is that something you do with Chicken Boy? Put like a little draw his head in there or something? Uh, not typically, but 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 I uh, I think I have, I think I have. But what 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 that made me think of was um, just developing your your signature mm -hmm. is is very important and practicing. I remember. Um, <clears throat> I would, I would flip over worksheets in school because I really wanted to have a cool signature because I love I love autographs as you can tell, so I I filled up the backs of my pages. It looked it looked insane just with my signature over and over and over <laughs> trying to develop. <laughs> there we go. Um, the O of Chicken Boy is drawn like an egg, or you could just put it yeah, in. Yeah, just draw an egg. Is like, an egg. That's his egg. <laughs> um, signature types. That's something else I wanted to talk about. I have a different autograph than signature because I want that autograph to be a little more legible and stylized than what I scribble on a check <laughs> like anybody uses go. those anymore. But uh, in one second, Aaron, I'll pass it right to you and uh, watch your arm there. You got to. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, just so you don't, you know, sign like Stephen King when nobody's looking. Um, <laughs> 
So, yeah, this one is more stylized. It's specific to the books. Again, so not everybody just has my signature on file whenever they want. Oh, there it is right there. Michael's holding it up to the screen. Um, Aaron, what were you going to say? Well, no, no. Friggin' years ago, back when I was still in high school, I had the opportunity to see David Copperfield live. Um, and he's got the big, believe it or not, this is David Copperfield's signature. And it goes back to the friggin' uh, the idea of Stephen King um, bloody hand signature because he did 5,000. But he goes through and he freaking kind of acknowledges everybody who does it. But it's a it's a scribble. I sign a lot of things, and mine is this is my squibbly line. My old boss, freaking when I was a gun dealer, um, his signature is it's a quick squibble. It's nothing. Uh, I've had to take his check in there, and they go, "This is not his thing." I'm gonna go pull up the signature line, and like they go, "This can't be real." You want me to go get his driver's license? Yes. <laughs> uh, literally, I pull his. This can't be real. I'm like, it is. Do you want me to go get him? And he goes in there goes, hey, literally pull the boss in for a payroll signature because it's, right. it looks like a heartbeat. <laughs> right. It's, uh, uh, uh go ahead. Uh, so, um, but it's one of those, as you said, friggin' it's a unique signature. Yeah. Um, but it's definitely his. And it's one of those, what? That can't possibly be theirs. Yes. But uh, mine looks like half an in sim, uh, infinity symbol uh, when I do anything as a write-up. When I do, like, a payroll signature, you can kind of tell there might be something there. Maybe. Mm -hmm. I yeah. don't know. With my regular signature, you could usually make out the first initial and the last initial, and the rest is a squiggle. But when I sign a book, I want somebody to be able to hold that up and go, that's the guy. Um Places to sign, besides curiosity shops, these small specialty shops, small businesses, and it's great to support them and they're supporting you. Remember, you're doing them as much of a service as they're doing you, and you want to make sure if people are coming just for your book, you also, hey, don't forget to take a look around. It's a great shop. Say hello to Jen. And, and you want to create that bond not only between you and the store owner, but the store owner and your readers. And because that's why they're having you there to create business for them. Uh, beyond that, libraries, it's pretty easy to contact your local library or five local libraries that are within driving distance, 45 minutes of your house, and set up a signing there. Make sure you bring them a free book to put in their inventory. <clears throat> And ask them if they want it signed or not, because sometimes they don't want it signed, sometimes they do. Um, so just ask them about that. One place I've done most of my signings are at conventions. And this is where you actually have a table to sell your product, and you can just sign them all day long as you're sitting there and selling to strangers who's never heard of you. But also at conventions and other places, there'll be book readings. And this is a great place to introduce people this is almost a whole nother topic, book readings, and I think we'll cover it later. But in brief, I'll say, plan ahead for that. Find what you want to read. Make sure you practice reading it once or twice so you know where you want to put your inflection and personalize it. Um, beyond that, there is a follow-up to a book signing. Michael does this great by taking pictures, putting them on Instagram of people holding his orb prop his book prop from the, not his personal orbs, but anyhow, um, newsletters. When you're at a signing, this is a great chance, especially if you're a smaller author, to say, don't forget to sign up for my newsletter. And this could be a tablet on the side where somebody pokes it in the world of COVID, wipe it down after every person, have your little box of wipes or your sanitizing spray. Your, your device will be able to handle it. Um, but get those folks on your newsletter if you can. This is an opportunity to forever contact them because they want your stuff already. They are a captive audience. And you guys, give me a second. I'll read. There's been a lot of comments here in chat. I want to give these two gentlemen a chance to reply to anything I just said, and then I'll read comments. Yeah, I think um, I think there there are opportunities to uh, make content um, and and make cool experiences while you're at the book signing like like the picture with the orb 
and that's something that happened as a result of uh, going to conventions. Um, like that didn't that didn't start until 2017 uh, with my first convention, uh, RavenCon, where everyone was the the cosplay was amazing. So I said, oh hey, can you pose pose with my orb? And so they would hold the orb, and you know they would be in character doing it. I even shot some videos uh, of them in character, and so so that that's that's a really cool thing. And conventions uh, is, I mean that that's a, that's a whole that's a whole uh, different animal. It is, um, but but uh, it's it's definitely it definitely it, it's like it's like a book signing, but within like this cool uh, this this cool nerdy environment. Um, yeah yeah so make content while you're there and uh and and yeah it, it is a good follow-up like you said aaron any thoughts or questions before i start reading comments nah. okay i'm gonna read some comments here so let's do that let me scroll up um some of these are going to be throwbacks to things we discussed before um covered that uh wordwind says I was at one of my regular gaming conventions, and the author of a game sat down at my table to play. He notices that I have one of his books off to one side and asks how I like it. I answer, it's an awesome book, but something <clears throat> happened. It's all messed up on the front cover. Um, he takes it and looks and says, oh, I can get you a replacement if... Then he notices it's one of the copies he had autographed with a thanks message. You jerk. You had me worried. <laughs> nice. Uh, Chaotica says, also, Terry Brooks has been one of my favorite signings in, like, my entire life. He's so funny and personable and makes his signings very personal if he can. And that's something I was saying before. Um, we had mentioned Stephen King previously and one of his book signings where he signed, like, 5,000 5, people came for the signing. And he would allow them to bring up to three things to sign. And by the end, there was a woman behind him with an ice pack on his shoulder. His hands were bleeding a little. And he was still going on. you got to remember, if you're at a signing on the other side of the table holding your stuff, these are human beings. They are not immortal statues who just can do this all day long. They have their stress, their anxiety, their stomach aches, their bathroom problems, their need for coffee. And you've got to allow for that and be understanding about that. And trust me, it will be appreciated, if not immediately because they're in so much public pressure at that very moment later they will appreciate you know the person who went hey you need a drink of water i can wait a minute you know get get what you need joe says did david copperfield's signature vanish in thin air it's magic marker um <laughs> do you think i should put a mustache curl in mine uh let's see here chaotica says libraries i love this comment by the way libraries have been my moat have been most of the places I've experienced most of my signings. I also enjoy them in libraries more. It feels cozier and more intimate at times. It does. There's less pressure for people to buy when they're in a library. They're, they're able to browse at their leisure instead of feeling like they need to, you know, pulling out money and whatnot. So uh, that's the comments here. Yeah. And now we're going to kind of go free form for a bit here. And I like that. And coffee shops are really good too. Books and coffee go together. That's true. Ple uh, just swimmingly. <laughs> That's a great idea right there. Um, now, what about you, Aaron? I know we, we discussed in a previous episode, you know, your relationship uh, as being a Marine. And could you do a signing on a military base? Is that something that is viable and feasible without stepping over that line that you have okay so uh on a military base you typically have the, either the AFES or the mwr organizations mwr is going to be navy uh or marine corps they run uh the base uh, uh exchanges there uh the naxs um a AFES runs the uh the army base uh, exchange and uh the air force base exchange so you've got a uh, they're the ones that, that kind of got the little bookstore nook in there so you got to get into that first um, on the respective bases. Uh, doing a signing there is not a big deal if you're in there. So yeah, it's not. A, I've got no problem doing it if you can get in there. Um, it's something I am willing to do. Have considered doing. It's just a case of 
I've got to have, I've got to be able to justify the floor space. Understood. Now, mm -hmm. uh, Marine Corps Heritage Foundation over here on Quantico or the Marine, uh, the Marine shop, uh, I could definitely swing it post pandemic, um, uh, as a table or something like that. Uh, they've got, they've got their own little friggin' library of whatnot. Um, and, uh, that's something I've got kind of in the works for persona non grata. Um, uh, as when we've talked about that with anchor series and whatnot, and, um, there's always the possibility because persona non grata works as a standalone book and setting the stage for the universe, being able to set that one up as a book that's available for free for service members deployed and just available as the, uh, the naval ship library. It's a good idea. Mm -hmm. And that's something else. Um, for it's not quite a book signing. Well, it could be a book signing. Michael, you've done book signings at schools, yeah. Yes. Yeah, book fairs. So let's talk about that for a minute. Yeah, those are really cool. Um, so that those are those are a great spot for Chicken Boy because uh, that that's the age of the readers, and um, th for that you would talk to. If you want, if you wanted to set up a, a book signing at school, you would call the school. They would put you in contact with the librarian, and uh, and then they would um, then they would they would work out a space for you. And uh, yeah, and so and so kids are uh, they're they're great readers, and because there's a big emphasis on reading in in elementary school especially, and there's a big emphasis on reading like the things you want to read because they they just want you to read. Right. And so. Uh, so it, and, it, and it's it's a it's a big honor when they choose, you know, to to pick up your book because you know they have, you know, their allowance or a limited amount of funds. So. A couple of comments. Uh, Weirdwind says also libraries tend to be filled with people who like to read, not just people cruising the coffee shop or using the restroom. And then Joe, being clever as Joe is, says I had to look up what persona non grata meant. It means quote an unacceptable or unwelcome person end quote. That's basically mm -hmm. basically me at every party. <laughs> well, you write what you know. <laughs> it's, uh... Well, no, it... mm -hmm. I, and mm -hmm. the cool part about it is, it's don't get me wrong. I probably chose the wrong title for the book, but it works for what it was. I think um, it fit well enough, actually, because he is an outcast. He's at a, a crossroads. He doesn't know where he belongs, and he's not necessarily being welcomed in to the situation. I, oh, it's an appropriate title. It's just not necessarily the right title if I wanted to sell the book. That I understand. Uh, I, I have the same thing with Harbinger. It, yeah. Um, but... Uh, the nice advantage I've got here living over, up in, near Quantico, I'm in Stafford, uh, is Quantico's got the Alfred M. Gray friggin' uh, research library. It is a uh, large and beautiful library uh, right next to the Marine shop. Um, and that's a beautiful place to do a signing or a reading um, uh, for something like Persona Non Grata or the Accursed Black series. Uh, because th there are kids on Quantico. Craft fairs. Craft fairs are another place where you can go rent a booth. Well, rent the space, bring your own booth usually. But that's, you crafted this item. And sometimes, you know, they, they will not let you in. And that's fair if this isn't fitting in with their theme. On the other hand, it might. So this is another place you can go and sit down all day and sign books. It doesn't hurt to ask. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, Wordwin says a friend of mine is a Marine and when I asked him to be a technical reader for one of my short stories his response was sure but not sure how much I can help you know us Marines the only reading we like to do is the labels on crayons to organize our meals you know I signed someone's face once <laughs> you, you signed I Again. I signed someone's forehead. Yeah. Give us that story, but let Aaron get his comment in here first. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, no. See, I predate the entire crayon thing, so it's one of those things. I get that it's a current meme. It just, 
I never existed during that time. Oh, yeah. Oh, I don't know that one. Uh, I guess they there's something about us being crayon eaters. Uh, really? Much like the jar heads, freaking the the high collars made it look like our heads were on jars, stuff like that. It, jar heads. I never knew that either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because because the high collars freaking gave it a a very jarish. Oh, I didn't know. Interesting. That feels like a like they didn't try very hard for a insulting nickname. Um, but uh, kind of like eating crayons is yeah, a well, terribly on the other hand, difficult one. The beautiful thing about a jar head terminology is uh, Reed's fucking owned that. They took it and they went, yep, yeah, we'll take it, and we're going to roll with it, and we're not going to get pissed. And yeah, yeah, no. it turned an insult into something they use. And that's, by the way, a great way to handle any insult. I'm speaking to anybody who's school age now. Own the insult. Mm. Don't play with it too much. Just own it and walk away. And yeah. no longer an insult. Oh. <clears throat> hey, here's the deal. We're Marines. You're not. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's a, and it's a beautiful community, and I have known a lot of Marines, and I've known s some classic stereotypes, and I've known Aaron and Ed, who is what I feel is a better example of a Marine, and the other ones are the rarity that we all, even other Marines, enjoy pointing at and giggling on, on occasion, so it's... Uh, there, there are stereotypes for a reason. There are. Okay, let's get some uh, closing thoughts on the topic. Aaron, can we start with you? Okay. Um, Wrap it up and recap. Okay, so the big takeaway from here is sign everything. Sign anything. Sign checks. Mm -hmm. for, don't put your name on them, but, but just sign them. Okay, put as many zeros as you want uh, in the front, not the back. Um People don't know what to do with it if you have extra zeros on the ass end. The banks look at it like they're funny. Uh, use red ink on a check, always. <laughs> okay. Uh, Aaron's opinion advice oh, oh, is his book own, signings, not book signings. of the show. <laughs> oh. oh, 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 you said talk about what I know, not what about... Oh, okay, so <laughs> book signings. <laughs> um, you know what? Look for opportunities. Get your face out there. Friggin' be willing to try new things. I mean, you never know. You might like it. Even one signing, one person buying a book and walking away with your book, signed or not signed if they don't want it, is better than nothing. And it's probably one more sale than you would have made that day if you had stayed home. Michael, sign other people's yeah, books. Tell us for the sure. forehead story and then give us your wrap up and recap of your thoughts for the show. Yeah, I, I, was, I was reminded of, of it like over the course of it, um, talking about signatures. And, uh, I, I this was at a Ring of Fire Con, uh, or Roth Con, so and a Johnny Cash Con. <laughs> yeah, Johnny Cash himself. I signed. <laughs> nice. um, and I had a reader who who bought the book the first day, read over half of it somehow during the course of the convention, and it's a long book, so I was really impressed. And she came and had. She had other signatures like on her face in in a in a rainbow of of different different inks. And uh, she she said, "Sign my face," and I was like, "I was like, okay." And she handed, but she handed me a sharpie, and, and so and so I signed her forehead. I, I took. Uh, I was like, "I'll take the forehead." So so I signed. So I signed her forehead, and, uh, and just as my mom was walking up, who was at the convention, and she was like, "What are you doing?" And I was like, <laughs> "Like whatever I want." She asked me too. She was like, "That's a sharpie." And then, uh, and yeah, I do what I want, and then I slam an egg. No, uh, <laughs> and uh, and she and and uh, she, my mom was like, "That's a sharpie." And the girl said, "I, I want this to last. <laughs> I want to go into work like this." So that was the that was, that was my favorite uh, non-book signing <laughs> memory. Signing. Yeah. So what? But are your, in terms of yeah, yeah, in terms of book signing in general. Uh, just uh just be engaging uh customers always right if they want you to sign their forehead sign their forehead um but uh be engaging and don't be afraid to talk to people you know because uh, you'll, you'll never know who, who might be interested in your book you'll never know um who might have family that they're like you know what this might be perfect for you know my niece or or so on and so mm -hmm. forth um just uh say hello and uh it, it, it never hurt never hurts never hurts to try 
to ask and to uh, try and make a connection. And don't be afraid of somebody who is significantly older. If you see somebody and you're like, wow, they are 70 or 80 years old, talk to them anyway. There are folks out there who have been on the sci-fi or fantasy train since before it was named those things. And mm -hmm. they are probably always looking for new good content. So don't hesitate with that. Uh, with the signings, as I said, practice your signature and figure out how to get to where you want to be to sign. And then be, be nice, be good, be personable while there as best you can. Um, with the people who are running, whether it's a convention, a library, or a small shop, or anything in between, as well as the people standing in front of you. Now, one quick closing question before I do my closing spiel here. Joe says, what would you do if someone asked you to sign one of their body parts, and then sometime later they came back with it tattooed on? So if I meet that girl and she has my... Oh. <laughs> and if it never came off... <laughs> So how would you feel about that? Uh, well, I don't know. I, I feel like that would be a very singular emotion uh, that I'd have to feel at the time. But I guess on, on a certain level, it would be it would be nice. It would be flattering, I guess, you know, that they en enjoyed uh, the experience that much that they would want it immortalized. But um, I would be I would be I'd be I'd be a little like, whoa, I, I, I don't know. Aaron? You're assuming it's never happened, but uh... <laughs> no, I don't care. Okay, cool. I have had friends who go to concerts and will get the lead singer of a band they really like or the whole band signatures, and they will have them tattooed on afterwards. This is something that certain mm. people do, and I'd be more than happy to do it. I'd be, you know, flattered to think that they want my scribble on them permanently and I would really have to probably put like a smiley face or some little doodle in there with it just a mustache yeah I guess so yeah we could just underline it with a mustache or something yeah it's uh that would that's be wild. Great. That's okay. wild yeah let's do the closing thing here I'm gonna check the mailbag there's nothing in it but keep in mind if you ever do want us to pass on birthday wishes or a special message or just your thoughts on an episode feel free to email us at rightnightshow at gmail.com that's w-r-i-t-e-n-i-g-h-t show at gmail.com and also uh, don't forget to stop by our other podcast Talk of the Tavern which is Toast Tangents and Topics and has been called uh, Terribly Inappropriately Horribly Fun and uh, also Stealing for Survival which is our fantasy adventure role-playing game that takes place in the same world as portals and downfall series i want to thank everybody who came by and hung out subscribed and chatted listened on the podcast you guys make it worth doing the show um i also want to thank everybody who threw bits such as drac and official who swung by and threw bits Ooh. as well as everybody who picked up a t-shirt or a coffee mug or a pint glass we do have pint glasses now available for each of the podcasts as well as some of the silly sayings that we have and i'll put the link up in the chat anybody else can find part of that merch at bit.ly slash tavern merch that's bit dot ly slash tavern merch and last but not least i want to thank everybody who hosted rated support us on patreon as well as paypal with monthly subscriptions and uh yeah, we're going to call that one a wrap for this, and we'll catch you on the next Right Night. Now, here's the Thank best part, George, okay? There's a photo out there. Sivar, it's got Penn Jillette and Lou Reed, all of okay? But it's signed, Magically Yours, and Take a Walk on the Wild Side. But Penn Jillette signed to Take a wild, uh, Walk on the Wild Side, and Lou Reed signed the Magically Yours just to be dicks to each other. Enjoy the journey, and remember, uh, right. <laughs> can be right.